Okay. We're live now. All right. So welcome, people, to the pre-show where you see Jono typing. <laughs> uh, I'm just posting about this on the old social media. Let me post right. Oh. Hang on. Google Plus is more confusing than it needs to be. Uh, all right, let me post here. So, folks, if you're watching right now, um, if you can post about it on the old social media networks and your blog, wherever else that people read, open your window and shout out if you want to. That's always, it's always a nice way of doing it. See. So can you folks see? Can you folks see me? Just to double check me, the IRC channel. All right. Yes. Yeah. All right, it's 11 o'clock. So we might as well get started. Um, so welcome, everybody. To, uh, to the weekly Q&A session. For those of you who don't know me, my name is John Bacon. I work as the Ubuntu Community Manager. Um, I, I lead a team of, uh, of five awesome people who, um, who are out there building community in different parts of the Ubuntu community and beyond. Um, the goal of this Q&A session is very simple. It's to just provide a means in which you can go and ask anything that you want. Um, you can ask literally anything. You can ask anything you want about Ubuntu, about Canonical, if you want to ask me about my views on free software or open source or politics or technology or cheese or fluffy bunnies or trees. It really doesn't matter. Everything is completely welcome. The goal here is, is that everybody should feel comfortable to ask anything. I don't want you to feel like you have to fit in and ask something that's polite or anything like that. If you want to ask a really piercing question about something that we're doing, then go ahead. You know, the, the floor is yours. One of the things that's nice about this is that we ask you folks to, to join um, IRC. And I know that that's good because it kind of reduces, and it helps if you want to ask a, a pretty piercing question, then it's easier to type it in than necessarily to be on the other end of a video cast. I'm not expecting Jose here to be asking me any mean spirited questions. Part of the reason for that is because he's just such a nice guy. Um, and he's also built his little Ubuntu studio here as well. I mean, look at this backdrop. It's pretty impressive. Um, so yeah, so everybody's welcome to ask anything they want. Uh, it's very simple um, how you ask a question. All you need to do is type in the word question in capital letters, um, and then your question, and then I can pick it out from the from the uh, from the chatter. Um, if you don't type question in capital letters, it's very likely I'm probably going to accidentally skip over it. So um, I'm seeing that some people are liking the T-shirt. So thank you. Um, I actually got this from. Um, uh, from uh, a member of the Kubuntu team, who's a guy in the Kubuntu Council, David Wonderly. He gave me this uh, at uh, UDS once. Uh, so thank you to the legend that is the Darkwind Duck. I think he might be just Duck now because he got sued by Disney or something. He called himself Darkwind Duck. I can't remember. Um, anyway, so stick your questions in, folks, and we'll get right to it. Um, also, just saying, what did you see this? Oh yeah, just saying. Is this is this reversed for you? It looks. I mean, my wife bought me this. Um, I'm obviously the best dad in the world. There's a there's a special medal that you can get for it. Um, okay, questions. Type your question. I'm seeing no questions. It's gonna be a very short video cast if there's no questions. Aha, dude. Joey, legend. This is the same dude. Um, so, dude on IRC is uh, is Joey from OMG Ubuntu, and Joey asks, "Can you tell us more about the Ubuntu Core Apps project?" Um, so, yeah, let me fill you in on on this. This is something that we literally just announced um, 
just a few minutes ago, um, and let me give you the backstory of this. So on, on the second of um, on the second of uh, January, we obviously announced the Ubuntu phone, and we we went out to CES and spent the week in, in Las Vegas talking to handset manufacturers and carriers about shipping the Ubuntu phone on their handsets, and we had a really fantastic week of uh, of meetings. Um, before we announced the Ubuntu phone, one of the things that we've we've wanted to do, and this this is something that Mark Shuttleworth was very very keen about doing, was work with our wider community to um, to work on the applications that are running on the phone itself. So. You know, creating a phone is not just creating a version of Unity that works well on a small screen. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of kind of underlying work that you need to do. You need to create an SDK. Uh, and we've released the, um, a developer preview of the SDK that you can get from developer.printu.com. Uh, you know, we obviously need the phone platform itself. And you need to have things like being able to get your applications from your desktop onto the phone. That's all part of the SDK. But you also need a set of applications that come with the phone. So at CES, we were demoing a couple of these apps, you know, things like making phone calls and uh, sending and receiving SMSs. Um, and we have, for example, a gallery on there. But there's a lot of applications that, that you, you still need. Um, there's a lot of applications that you still need um, in a, in, you know, on a, that you're going to use in a, basic, in a basic phone. You're going to need a calendar and a clock, a weather app, a calculator, an email client, an RSS reader, maybe a file manager, a document viewer, uh, things like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and of course, many of us are going to want a terminal as well. Um, so we basically, all of those applications that I just mentioned, uh, we consider to be the core apps that we, that we really need on the phone. The day that we announced the phone, uh, we also had a form on developer.ubuntu.com where anybody could, who was interested in helping to build these core applications, um, could go and fill in that form and say that they, they, they'd like to volunteer. So um, we were asking, you know, QML and Qt developers to basically fill in that form. We expected probably 50 or 60 people to fill that form in, and then would work from that. We had over 1,500 people uh, fill that form in. We had 500 people fill in on the first day. So we just had an absolutely tremendous level of interest um, in participating. Um, and this is, you know, so these are obviously uh, people, people uh, who we want to help with with development, um, who, who are going to be doing the, the programming. So what we've done is we've gone and set up all the wiki pages where there's a wiki page per application, and everybody, uh, we basically spent some time um, figuring out the user journeys and the functional requirements that are really needed to deliver a basic version of one of those applications, and we've put them on those wiki pages. Um, uh, we've also gone and set up all of the launchpad projects. Um, uh, all the code is going to be publicly available from day one. It's all going to be open source, um, and we're actually just working right now on getting a, a kind of a, a, a basic template application that we'll put into the trunk of each branch uh, that our developers will go from. So, in a nutshell, we've, we've got all these projects set up, and we know what to work on. Um, those fifteen hundred developers, what we did is we took the best of the breed of those developers, and we've broken them into teams. So we've got. You know, five or six, seven people who are working on each on, a, on each application. Each team is mapped to an application, um, and we're inviting obviously people to go and and, uh, uh, and participate and write code and, and and develop those apps. Now, before you can really build that build software, it's always best to kind of get the design in place first. And this is also something we wanted to work, work with our community around. Some people have been a little critical of us in the past, saying you know people can't pass, participate in design. Well, this is a good example of how you can. Uh, people have participated in design in lots of aspects of Ubuntu, but this is this is definitely an area where I think there's a great opportunity there. So we're using, uh, some of you may be familiar with Balsamic. This is an online mock-ups tool that you can use. Um, and what we've done is the Balsamic people have been very generous and they've given us access to, they have a, a, a feature called My Balsamic, which is basically a custom site that you can use for, it acts as like a repository for design. So what we've done is part of the reason why I wanted to get all the user journeys and functionality set up for each of the apps is um, so we can then say to our design community, all right, here's the functionality, here's the screens that we need. Go to My Bar Summit and create some designs, then add them, like add a link to your design on the wiki pages. And you can do things like, you know, you can go to that site and you can you can leave comments on the designs. So it becomes a very, very collaborative process. So. Um, Unfortunately, we didn't have a chance to get like the full design guidelines finalized for the apps. You know, in the future, if someone wants to write an app for the Ubuntu phone, we'll be able to point them towards uh, a set of design guidelines. But what we have done is we've provided like a, 
a summarized list of, of things to focus on. So, for example, don't use the edges of the screen because that's obviously used for the phone OS itself. Uh, you know, uh, functionality inside the app should go in the menu at the bottom. Um, always focus on content. Don't cluster it with buttons and toolbars. Always have that label at the top of the app. Those kinds of guidelines. So basically, uh, from today onwards, we're now in a position where we know what apps we want. We've got the, 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 the wiki pages and everything set up. Uh, now we're inviting our design community to go and contribute designs and, and get that process moving. Um, I just want to have a, a quick shout out to two wonderful people on my team, uh, David Panella and Michael Hall, who just always do just absolutely tremendous work in everything that they do, and they've been working hard to help get this going. And uh, there's also a guy called Kevin Wright, um, who doesn't work on our team but works for Canonical, and he's done a really wonderful job in helping to pull together the, the requirements. We just want to make the bar as low as possible so people can help out with the project. Um, and you know, and just think you could contribute to it, you could contribute a design or some code to an application that could be used on millions of handsets in the future. So we're really excited about that. Uh, we're going to be, um, I'm going to be providing like periodic, periodic updates about how the project's working um, on my Q&A video cast every week. Um, we're also going to be actually announcing another project very soon that is kind of codenamed 100 Scopes, which is where we're going to be reaching out to our community to write scopes that will ship with Ubuntu. We've got like a new scopes API that's going to be landing pretty soon that's essentially going to really significantly improve the user experience of, of the Dash and, and how scopes work. And it means that we want to ship like 100 scopes with Ubuntu, so the search experience is very, very diverse. But we'll have more, more information about that soon. Anyway, I know that was a bit of a long-winded answer, but I hope it gave you everything you needed to know, uh, Joey. Um, Randall, RRNW exec, the legend that is Randall Ross. Um, uh, what's the biggest Ubuntu news that you've heard this week? Uh, this week's been a this week's been a pretty uh, <coughs> pretty good week for Ubuntu. We've had a lot of stuff going on. Um, some of you may have read about. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, for me personally, it's the it's the uh, core apps project that I just mentioned is is a big deal. Um, also, um, probably the biggest news that's hit the headlines, I think, has been this discussion about Ubuntu being a rolling release. Um, and I just want to take a second in a moment to just to give a bit of background information on that because I think you know I've seen that the Fly in V, which is by the way an incredible neck and also an incredible guitar. Has um, has asked for my opinion on the rolling release. So I want to I want to tend to that. Um, so uh, I'm sorry, but this is going to be a bit long winded. But I'm going to give you I want to give you folks all of the information that I have. So uh, one of the things that we've been doing, as you know, is we 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 break Ubuntu into six month release cycles, and it's not just a good way of delivering software, but the six month cycles are also a good way in which we can plan what we want to do. So we'll say, you know, we get to the Ubuntu developer summit, we'll say we want to deliver this, these features um, in a particular release. So as an example, 1304, we're improving the Dash Scopes um, service. Um, you know, we obviously, you know, announced the phone. There's going to be improvements made to various aspects. So we, we define these things up front. Now, some things, some projects and some um, areas that we want to improve take longer than six months. So what we tend to do is we tend to then think in LTSs. And, our long-term support releases come out once every two years. So the last one was Ubuntu 12.04. So um, you know when Ubuntu 12.04 came out, some of this long-term work that we think of, we've been thinking within the context of Ubuntu 14.04. I got together with um, I'm a member of the Ubuntu engineering management team at, that's on the on the on the Ubuntu team at Canonical, and I got together with a bunch of my fellow engineering manager colleagues. Uh, in Portland for a week, and we spent some time thinking about this kind of bigger picture of, of how we want to essentially manage Ubuntu engineering. Um, and it's really broken into two areas. One is uh, how can we improve the quality of Ubuntu in, ge in general, and how can we optimize the Ubuntu engineering process? Um, some of you who are just users of Ubuntu will, will probably be pretty unaware of, of a lot of the work that goes into just getting a release out, and we want to optimize that as much as possible. So. I just want to make it very, very clear up front. We are not, there's no confirmation that we're moving to a rolling release. Um, it's not been decided. Um, what we basically did at, at that meeting was we sat down and we assessed the things that we feel like we need to do to generally improve the quality of the Ubuntu engineering process. And we found a few things. So one of them, for example, is 
Um, delivering applications into the Ubuntu Software Center is complex and hard, and it is, um, you know, part of the reason for that is because, you know, we ship Debian packages, and Debian packages uh, run as root, and that means that we have to be very careful in how those packages are assessed. Another element was the, um, the way our archives are laid out. I, I won't bore you with the complexity, but our, the way our archive, archives are lay, laid out doesn't make a huge amount of sense. Things have changed over the years. In the old days, you know, everything in name was considered officially supported by Canonical. But these days, really a subset of, we want to be, be able to identify things in main that are supported by Canonical, but other things that are main, you know, pieces of software that we want to focus on as well. So we have some archive reorganization things we want to change. Um, another element is the release process is very complicated. So right now, a lot of manual work needs to happen when we want to cut a release. If we say, okay, we're going to release Ubuntu 12.04, there's a set of manual steps that our release team go through to get that out. Um, and that, for example, impacts our flavors. I mean, our flavors, people like Kubuntu and Edubuntu and Lubuntu and Zubuntu and Ubuntu Studio, they rely on Canonical to a significant extent for their release process as well. So that means that when we change our release process, it impacts our flavors. And really, our flavors should be able to have control over their own destiny. So we had all of these different things in place. But one of the main overriding things that we wanted to improve, that we want to improve in moving forward, is what we refer to as daily quality. Now, this is essentially people like me and other people who are working on Ubuntu. We most of us are running the development release of Ubuntu. So right now, I'm running Raring, and uh, in the old days of Ubuntu, rare, uh, the development release was sometimes it was a little shaky. You know, sometimes you'd update, do a disk upgrade, and it might not boot. And uh, we wanted to prevent against that happening. We wanted the development release of Ubuntu should be rock solid. It should feel stable. Um, and then the obviously the stable releases is the ones that we that we that we release and we provide security updates and stable updates and all that kind of stuff. So the general goal here has been how can we keep the development version of Ubuntu continually moving along uh, where you know new updates are coming in, things like new versions of Unity and LibreOffice or whatever else, but we can continue um, to maintain the quality. Now when you start talking about terms like that, that's when the, the topic of a rolling release comes up because there are a number of benefits to a rolling release in the sense that um, it enforces a level of quality in the core engineering of Ubuntu which is good for our developers. It's, you know, When we get a bug in, in the development version of Ubuntu and it takes a machine down, it doesn't just, it's not just inconvenient. It means, for example, all engineers who are working on Ubuntu at Canonical can't work for a day. And that adds up. Um, but there are also benefits in terms of simplifying our release process and, again, empowering our flavors and how that would work. So essentially, my take on this is I think a rolling release is brilliant. I think it's a, the right step forward for us to make. Uh, but what we've done is all of the work that we identified that we want to achieve by 14.04 are the kind of things that we'd need to do to even consider rolling release. Like right now today, if, 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 if we decided to do a rolling release, it would be a bit of a disaster because we don't have all the pieces in place to do it. So the goal of, of the quote-unquote road to 14.04 was to basically put together all of the pieces that we need to help. So if we decide you know, in the, let's say, the 1404 cycle, we decide, yes, we want to go to a rolling release. At least we've then got the quality in place, we've got all the tooling necessary, the archive changes have been made, and we're then in a position to make that decision. Um, so the uh, the summary here is we're not confirmed that we're going to a rolling release, but we do, we're putting all the pieces in place that we, that we might need if we want to make that decision in the future. Uh, it's too early to decide on that right now. So anyway. Again, sorry, long answer, but I know that uh, there's been a lot of interest in this, and I hope that provides a, a, a bit more context. I'm going to drink something now. Okay, so uh, let me see what the next question is. Um, ba -da -ba. Uh, next question is from Amaro Ray123. I heard rumors that Ubuntu is considering rolling release. All right, I've already answered that. Um, Robin J, or rather, a question, or rather, a favor. Please mention next time in which IRC channel I need to be. So uh, all you need to do is go to the Ubuntu on Air website, and you should see the IRC channel embedded. You can just join it right there. 
Um, so you don't even need to know. But if you want to join in an IRC client, it's Ubuntu dash on dash air. Um, all right, folks, keep your questions coming in. Um, we, I've noticed that the questions have stopped. So keep, keep them coming in, and then we can make sure that I can get through everything that you need to know about what we're doing in Ubuntu. Um, next question is from Pamibo. Do you think that uh, we will see an Ubuntu Phone OS on a tablet someday, like Android um, and iOS? Um, so yeah, the tablet is something that we're interested in. Um, it's something that there's been some work going on inside of Canonical around that. Um, so you can expect to see um, the introduction of a tablet interface at some point in the next couple of months. Um, we're definitely interested in it. Um, remember, uh, Ubuntu is this Ubuntu is this wider um, convergent strategy. I mean, you know, I, some, I think sometimes we've 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 not done such a good job of explaining this. But Ubuntu is not just a, a Linux distribution. The idea is that it's it's a it's an ubiquitous operating system that runs across all of these different devices: your phone, your tablet, your TV, your desktop, uh, and the cloud as well. And it's it's a shared user experience across all those devices. So tablet's definitely something that's going to be part of that. Uh, Guido Palamans, when will the Ubuntu Q, uh, QML API update? It hasn't changed since the announcement of the phone. So there's a lot of work going into the SDK right now. Um, you can expect to see some periodic updates, you know, in the next, I think, in the next few months. Um, hopefully, we should have a, a bigger update around March sort of time. But you know, everything's kind of in flux right now because the SDK team's working on different parts of it. Um, but yeah, you should expect some updates soon. The Flying V already asked, answered that question about the rolling release. Uh, Nathan PC, uh, is there a video about how to create packages for PPAs? I'm not sure if there was a video. Daniel Holbach did some videos a while back, though. Um, but I'm not sure if there is. Um, so if anybody wants to help make some videos, that'd be great. Uh, Robin J, this is a little hobby project of mine. Uh, but it uses Ubuntu artwork. Hang on, let me click on this. Let's see what this is. Ubuntu Launcher Beta. Uh, so this looks like an Android launcher. But it uses Ubuntu Artwork. Is there any kind of license agreement, disclaimer, privacy policy, whatever legal nonsense I need to put in there as to not get in trouble? So if you use the Ubuntu trademark or you use some of the some of the trademark content that we have, then you need a trademark license is basically the way it works. I believe that the Circle of Friends, I think, is part of that, which it looks like you're using. Um, the best thing to check out is the is the, is the uh, trademark policy, and if you've got any questions about that, feel free to email trademarks at ubuntu .com and they can they can check in that with you. Greg F. Martin is QML the primary language that's being focused on right now. Uh, certainly for the phone, QML really is. I mean, we support HTML5, QML, and uh, Open native OpenGL. Uh, for the desktop, we haven't really been focused too much on on the desktop um, app developer program for because we've been so busy on the phone. Um, but you know, one of the goals here is that you can write applications in QML and it will work on each of the different devices. So one of the one of the things that the SDK team is working on, and they're in kind of the research phase right now, is what we call responsive design, which is web developers will be familiar with. And that's the idea is that you essentially you create your your application user interface and then the UI will work on a phone, but it will also work on a tablet or on the desktop as well. And that's part of the plan for, for the SDK. Professor Twitch, can you tell us more about the new Scopes API? I can, after I've drank some coffee. So um, basically, one of the problems that we found, um, so let me back up a little bit. Um, if, when you click on the ability button, you click on the dash, um, um, you get the dash, and the dash appears. And you can search in there, and it will search online resources as well as uh, your local machine. So it will search um, your files and your folders and your applications, but it will also search places like YouTube and Ubuntu One Music uh, service and all that kind of stuff. One of the things that we found, some of the feedback that we got in 12.10, was that the quality of the searches uh, was not particularly good. And um, you know, some people will have seen that. Uh, you know, there was some controversy over the Amazon. On the over the Amazon search results coming back, and you know, many of us have seen that some of the search results come back and not particularly good. Uh, some of them match, but there's obviously a lot of room for improvement. Um, 
So that was one problem. The second thing as well is that the, the goal of the Dash is that it becomes this like ubiquitous place where you can search everything. Um, so I mean, you should be able to search in the Dash, and you should be able to search IMDb and Wikipedia and um, Evernote and you know the BBC and your Twitter feed and everything. Like you should just be able to search, and it will pull back everything that's relevant to that search term. But one of the, one of the challenges of that is that you know if you search for something, so for example, if I search for Angry Birds, it makes more sense to bring back results from the um, application scope as opposed to results from, let's say, the music scope. Um, so we have to engineer into this. Um, we need to engineer into this work um, a smart scopes service, and that was where you will do a search term, and then it will basically the service will tell you the right kind of scopes to search for. Um, so what it does is it, it means that the searches are smarter and they're adaptable to some of the search terms and that kind of stuff. So that's basically what this is. So the API essentially is, there's a new API in the Dash itself, which is where people can write scopes, um, and those scopes work quickly and efficiently. Um, there's also discussion about being able to search a specific scope. So for example, you could type in Amazon colon, and they'll only search Amazon. In a similar way to you can do a similar sort of thing in, in Google searches. But the other part of this is this smart scope service, which is essentially a means in which we can improve the quality of these scopes. And it's also more efficient. You know, if, if you've got 100 scopes installed on your machine and you search for Angry Birds, you don't want to search all of those scopes. It's going to take too long. So the smart scope service will essentially say, you should search these scopes, and they'll bring back the best results. So that's basically how the API is going to work. Um, we're going to be, uh, just so you folks know, we're going to be providing a lot of detail about this. There's going to be a full spec that's going to be available online. Uh, we're planning on doing a Google Plus discussion. This was, wasn't something that we were able to discuss at UDS. We didn't have time to get this ready. So in the absence of a UDS discussion, we're actually going to have a virtual UDS discussion, which will be a Google Plus Hangout, um, where we're going to have some members from the community and obviously the engineers who've been working on this. So there'll be a full spec that explains how all this works. There'll be a Google Plus session. And then if there's any other, any other queries or content that people are unsure about, I'll be obviously doing my usual Q&A. Um, I might do a special Q&A session, bring one of the engineers on, so if anyone's got any other questions. So that's basically how the API works. All right. Um, Flying Pig, are there any plans for a core ops project for the desktop? It seems that GNOME and Unity are drifting apart more and more. Nautilus gets worse with each release. Would also be handy to have one source tree for all form factors. So yeah, so part of the goal here is that even though the core apps work is obviously very, it's focused on, um, obviously it's focused on, on the phone. When we have the responsive design features built into the SDK, then it should be pretty straightforward for those apps to work across all of the different devices. So it will work on the desktop as well. Um, in terms of a specific one just for the desktop, uh, we, we don't have any current plans for that. A lot of the core apps we already, we already have, things like Rhythmbox and Firefox and whatever else. Um, icons, when will Canonical publicly acknowledge that they messed up on the shopping lens and do something about it? Um, well, that's a good question, but it, it's a slightly leading question. Um, so let's break it into a few parts. One is the delivery of the software, and the other is the delivery of the policy around how it works. So, they're, they're, you know, this, the software itself is, uh, you know, being able to search for something and it bringing back good results in terms of Amazon. Um, I personally would agree with you that the implementation is not good. Uh, it doesn't work particularly well. Um, in some cases, it works. I mean, if I search, I'm, I'm really into barbecue. If I search for smoker, it will bring back results of smokers that I can buy on Amazon, and that's good. But it also brings back some bizarre French trance albums and whatever else. Um, so it could definitely be improved. And I think Canonical, uh, you know, will will openly accept the fact that the the implementation sh can be improved and should be will be improved with this new API. We then have the policy, and we have things like the opt-in opt-out debate and the privacy debate and all that kind of stuff. Um, and there's a few different perspectives here. Personally, I think we're doing the right thing by leaving it switched on because we've always said that the best features in Ubuntu should be on by default. Uh, some people have a different viewpoint, and that's fine. 
Um, there are the important thing to remember here, I think, is that you know we've been responsive to a lot of the feedback. So, you know, some people said, you know, why isn't the the traffic encrypted? And that was, um, you know, why isn't it made? Why isn't it clearer that the dash is online and search is online? And in raring, if you hover over the Ubuntu button or you um, click to enable the dash, it now clearly says searches uh, locally and online. Um, so we've we've made a, a, a series of you know there's a series of responses that we've made in in, in to some of the feedback. Uh, one of the mistakes that I think Canonical did make here that we um, there's been quite a bit of internal discussion about resolving this is landing something and then there's still stuff to do on it. So one of the problems with this whole scenario was that the the the, the support for Amazon landed, but it was half finished, and the community were under the impression it was finished. And there is this disconnect between uh, some members of our, of our development community and our enthusiast community. The, our enthusiast community will see, read, read, a web, read a news story on OMG Ubuntu or I Love Ubuntu or whatever and see that this new feature landed in the development release. And our enthusiast community often presumes that, therefore, it is complete. Here's the deal. In Ubuntu, just because it lands in the development release, it doesn't mean it's finished. In many cases, it's not finished. In many cases, it's landed, so we have a first cut and we can go and improve it. But we, we should have improved the messaging and, and the discussion around that. That's the reason why, for the new API, there's going to be a full spec, there's going to be the Google Plus session, all that kind of stuff. So I don't think it's fair to say that we messed up. I mean, I think the Canonical definitely made some mistakes, but... Um, there was also a, just a tremendous amount of bile flowing around that whole discussion. Um, and my view, as has been the view of Canonical for many years, is if somebody's got constructive, detailed feedback, then we love that. Like a great example of that is Alan Bell. Alan Bell had some criticisms. You know, Alan Bell has been a member of the community for many years. He had some criticisms, but he shared his criticisms. Um, non-emotionally and constructively. Um, and what happened, were, you, but, but then you had some people who would come to my blog or wherever else, and they'd be screaming bloody murder for, in, in these comment boxes. Um, just to be quite clear, I mean, that kind of feedback, people r ranting and raving, um, it, that's not helpful, you know. It, 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 doesn't, it, it doesn't kick off a discussion or a debate to help resolve the issues. So, the, the, if, if some of you, here's a tip for the future for some of you who, who um, <laughs> some of you who may see some controversial things that we do. If you see something that you don't like that we do in Ubuntu, if you engage with 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 the development team or with Canonical or whoever um, in a constructive, non-emotional way, then that feedback is listened to, it's cared about, and and it's taken into account. If you go and rant and scream and call Mark Shot with this and call me that and call Rick Spencer this and that. Then you know it sounds like a child screaming from from a kindergarten, and that that kind of ranting and raving doesn't really help anybody. So you know, so constructive feedback. You know, th there was some constructive feedback, obviously, from the whole Amazon thing, and that was really taken into account. I mean, there was meetings. I had multiple meetings with people inside the Canonical where we went through and read the feedback line by line, uh, and you know, and it influenced the engineering decisions that were being made. But people ranting in the comment box, he was ignored. Um, next question. Oh, as I fall over in my chair, I'm the only person who will fall over while sat down. Uh, well, 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 well. Here it is. Next question is from Icons. Why doesn't Canonical give the trademark to the community and form a foundation so that the community can have more input in the OS and direction? Given the trademark to the community doesn't change anything about how the OS is built and the direction of, of Ubuntu, there are really two quite disconnected factors here. Um, the trademark is uh, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize about, about trademarks and how trademarks work is, first of all, trademarks typically need to be, they need to be owned by an entity. So that could be a foundation, theoretically. Uh, but most typically, it's a company or a registered corporation. So Canonical owns the Ubuntu trademark. What a lot of people don't realize is if you don't protect trademarks uh, and, and protect in, in, against infringement of those trademarks, uh, then you can lose them. 
Um, so you know, a trademark gives us the ability to ask somebody to stop using the Ubuntu trademark if it doesn't represent what Ubuntu is, as an example. So if somebody's going around selling um, whoopee cushions with Ubuntu written on them, um, then then we could go to those people and say, "You should, can you, you know, stop doing that because Ubuntu is not a whoopee cushion, right?" Um, if we don't go and protect those trademarks, then um, then then, like I say, we could lose them, and we could lose the right to to to, to maintain them. Now, Ubuntu. If you, if anyone who knows about trademarks looks at the Ubuntu trademark policy, it's a very very open policy because obviously one of the things we wanted to do is to allow our loco teams, for example, to be able to print t-shirts and create merchandise and, you know, create banners and posters and whatever else. We've always wanted to be very, very open in how people can use our trademarks, but be able to protect them where necessary as well. So, um, you know, we've, we've been doing Ubuntu for many years now. We have hundreds of loco teams all over the world who are creating uh, merchandise and using the Ubuntu trademark online and in the real world and wherever else in lots of different ways. I don't think that needs to change. I think you know people are able to do what they need to do. Uh, now, if somebody tries to sell some random product that's got nothing to do with Ubuntu and they use the Ubuntu logo, yeah, we're going to come down on them, and we have a team that takes care of that. Um, in terms of having more input in terms of the operating system and the direction, um, Ubuntu is a very, very open project. I mean, we've been openly governed from day one. Um, Mark Shuttleworth is still on the community council. Uh, we have a technical board, we have multiple governance teams where people can participate. Um, and you can influence and participate in pretty much most parts of Ubuntu. Now, there are some parts where Canonical has a very clear influence. Traditionally, Unity has been a good example of that. And that's one thing that you know, my team and, one of the, uh, and, and the engineering management team, we're trying to fix. We're trying to improve the, you know, where people can collaborate in different parts of Ubuntu in terms of those specific Canonical pieces. But you know, if you want to if you want to influence, you know, if you want to get involved in uh, in the foundations and the desktop layers, or you want to help out with sound and video, or whatever it might be, then just come and help. There's always stuff that we can we can find for people to do. Uh, unfortunately, some people and I'm certainly not suggesting this is you, icons, but some people um, who haven't demonstrated capability in a part of the community. Um, that if, if so, so, sorry, I'm I'm botching my words. Let me let me back up. Some people want to be able to influence the decision making of a of an open source project without actually contributing to the engineering, as an example. And Ubuntu has always been a meritocracy. If you do good work, um, then and you contribute well, then then your reputation grows and you become more involved in the leadership and the decision making of, of Ubuntu. Um, and that's always the way it's it's worked in Ubuntu, and that's the way it should work in my mind. Um, we, I, I would be resistant for us to try and create a system in which people who don't actively actually contribute to Ubuntu uh, can just dictate how the how Ubuntu should 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 move forward and change and grow and and whatever else. Um, you know, people who help to influence where dis where Ubuntu goes have really earned it, and I think that's the right way in which we should do it. Cormac, W A K W A. Any word on when there's going to on when they're they're going to do theming work with the Unity desktop? Um, I don't know. I mean, theming has been something that's been discussed in the past. You know, to be honest with you, it's it's a real low priority. I mean, you know, we just released a phone. There's work going on with the TV. Um, there's work going on in lots of aspects of Ubuntu in terms of how the engineering works. And we already have a nice theme. Um, it's just it's one thing. One of those there's. There's millions of things we'd like to do that just have a pretty low priority um, that require staff time. So, unfortunately, that's that's on the lower priority list. Professor Twitch, Mark talked about applications having a phone face and a desktop face. Is there a plan for the Ubuntu Phone Core apps uh, to be the phone face to the existing desktop apps such as events, GCal, Cool, etc.? No, um, that's not the plan. What Mark was talking about there? Sorry, my coffee's getting cold. Let me just sip it. What Mark was talking about there was what we refer to as responsive design. I mentioned this a little bit earlier on. This is where um, you can create an application. Let's say you create the, the calendar app for the phone, and then we can ship a UI that works on the phone on the smaller form factor that's familiar with the edges. And then you can also ship an app, the, the same application with a different skin, essentially, that will work on the desktop or the tablet or, whatever, or the TV or whatever else. 
So uh, that's basically what he's referring to. In terms of um, applying that to the existing de desktop applications that we ship, such as LibreOffice and events, um, that will be a tremendous amount of pretty ugly engineering. Creating a QML UI for a GTK and GObject application would be a bit of a hack, to say the least. Um, and even then, you know, even then you'd have things like if you want to, op if you click open to open a file dialog, you'd probably get the GTK file dialog when you really want whatever custom file dialog we've got, you know, for the platform. So it really wouldn't work. And then you've got the performance issues. You know, one of the benefits of, of, of building applications designed for a phone is that we can optimize them for phones, and that means that they run blazingly fast on the desktop. Um, so no, I don't think we're going to do. I don't think we're going to do that. Uh, Randall asks, there's been a thread recently on the Ubuntu phone mailing list about partnering with a fair trade phone handset manufacturer. The idea will be to get Ubuntu deployed on a hardware platform that mo more closely resembles Ubuntu's ethos. Any thoughts on pursuing this idea? I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, um, I haven't seen anything discussed about it, um, but I completely support the idea. And I think just I think Clonic will be you know, supportive of that as well as, as, as one of the potential handsets. Uh, Aeon Wanderer, any clues about customization on the Ubuntu phone? So there's going to be a, a set of settings that you can configure, and we'll also have the indicators at the top of the phone that you can drag down. Um, so yes, there is customization going to be available. Um, but beyond that, that's all I know. Pemibo, will we see more tutorials for Ubuntu Phone OS and Ubuntu Desktop in the future? I like the ones on developer.android.com, or the video you did on developer.ubuntu.com, that little browser, those help me um, a lot. Uh, yes, the plan is we're going to do more of those. We're really, I mean, we, you know, we've kicked off this year to just, I mean, it's really got going pretty early. You know, we started the phone thing on the 2nd of January, and, you know, we've been, my team's been busy working, getting the 100 Scopes project ready and getting the Ubuntu Core Apps project ready. There's going to be the API, lot, you know, the Dash API work that we're doing. There's so much stuff going on right now that we've been almost in this compressed state. Um, so when things lighten up a little bit, we can get to uh, getting some more tutorials online. Uh, Kev Quirk asked about the rolling release. already covered that earlier on. Uh, the good news is that this video cast has been, uh, has been recorded. So if you, if you missed it, you join late, then you can go and check the, uh, the recording afterwards. Uh, you can go to youtube.com uh, forward slash into on air. You'll be able to subscribe to see when we like have sessions and check for past sessions. Absolutely. Uh, Jamesh asks, is QML, JavaScript, CC++ now the preferred way to develop for Ubuntu desktop also? Uh, not really. I mean, we, we haven't really... At some point, we will have a recommended SDK for the desktop. Uh, my inclination is that it's probably going to be Qt and QML. Um, but right now, you know, uh, we're just inviting people to write software in whatever is supported in Ubuntu. So, you know, GTK, um, you know, C sharp, whatever else, you know, that's, that's all good. Uh, Popey, my son Sam knows you as daddy's friend who always wears flip flops. Yet in recent photos, you're not wearing them. This upsets Sam greatly and makes me look like a terrible father. Why aren't you wearing flip flops? Thank you, Popey. Uh, I haven't been wearing flip flops recently because it's been a bit cold out in California, and now I live out. Now I've been living out here for four years. Um, I'm a sensitive Californian type who needs my probiotics, avocado, or moisturizer. Actually, that's a lie. I don't have any of those things. Um, so yeah, no, I've been. I've just been wearing shoes while it's been a bit cold. But I started wearing shorts today. The flip flops came back a few days ago. So don't worry, Popey. You will once again be a father in the eyes of your son. Not necessarily a great father, but at least not a terrible father. So, Icons. Will Canonical at some point better recognize top community contributors and do more to support low code? It seems Fedora better supports its communities with resources. Um, I think we've been doing, uh, we've been generally done a pretty good job in terms of supporting low codes. I mean, the challenge we've got is that we, there's so much work going on, you know, let me put it this way. Just because some work isn't happening doesn't mean that we don't care. Uh, we've just got to prioritize. And, um, you know, my team has traditionally worked a lot with, with local teams. Um, and 
we've been so busy focused on the app developer program and the engineering there and, and the phone stuff in various other places. It's really, you know, it's there's always areas that we want to focus on and sometimes we just don't have enough time in the day. Like I, I feel like perennially um, guilty about not being able to spend more time with translators and with documentation writers um, and with more with locos. Um, so Randall, um, who's in the IRC channel, RRNW exec, him and I have a weekly call every Friday where we work together and plan out what we want to do with local teams. One of the things I committed to for my team at the last UDS, unfortunately I wasn't at the UDS because my baby was about to be born, um, was I'm asking everybody in my team to include local teams in the work that they're doing. And then we've also been working on things like the Ubuntu Advocacy Development Kit. Um, and um, we've got some work that we're doing around uh, loco.ubuntu.com and, and raising the visibility of some of the great work that's going on in the local community in terms of blog entries. So Randall has become, kind of become this um, honorary member of the team to help do this work. Um, and uh, you know, I'd, you know, we'd like to, I'd like to continue moving that forward. Um, unfortunately, in terms of getting my team to do more than that, we, we just we just don't have enough hours in the day right now. So uh, icons, I sympathise with the fact that we should be doing more. Um, if I if, if it was a perfect world, then I'd love to. Uh, if it was a perfect world, then I'd love to just hire a bunch more people. But um, you know, it's not a perfect world. Um, that was a weird noise. Dude asks: Recently, some developers of apps in the Ubuntu top ten page chart have been mentioned have mentioned their low sales. A canonical concern with the current sales figures, perhaps, or is it a case of getting people to use the software sense more? I think it's a few things. I think we need to improve the, the level of marketing that's going on with these apps, and we need to uh, improve the use of the software center. Um, yeah, I, I, we, we've seen some low figures on some of these apps, um, and that's something that the team that's managing that work, the consumer apps team, is aware of it, and they're, and they're currently looking into ways in which we can improve this. So hopefully this should definitely improve in the future. Um, Flying Pig, will I be able to use Ubuntu TV on my Ubuntu desktop once it's finished? Um, hopefully, yeah. Well, the way we'd like this to work in the future is that uh, the Unity code base includes each of these different UIs. So if you were to plug your Ubuntu machine, for example, into a TV, then it would display the TV UI, that kind of stuff. So yes, you should be able to. Uh, next question is icons again. Uh, California Loco says that you go to local events in your own state. Says you go to local events in your own state or even idle, idle on the channel. Oh, I don't go to local events in my own state or even idle on the channel. Doesn't seem very supportive. Wow, I can't. You're bringing the uh, slightly piercing questions. Sounds like you're a little bit of a cynic about it, but that's fine. Like I said earlier on, I welcome all questions. So, yeah. Um, it's it's it, you know it's true. I don't go to a lot of local events, California local events. Um, there's a few reasons for that. One is um, more specifically recently for uh, for the last year, basically, uh, my wife has been pregnant and we've had a baby. Um, and no offense to the California local team, but you know our, my priority is taking care of my wife um, and making sure that she's happy and comfortable. And there's obviously been everything that relates to having a baby, like getting the room ready and all that kind of stuff. Um, the second thing is, and this is going to sound potentially a bit mean, but it's not meant to. I basically work for 14 or 15 hours a day on Ubuntu all day, every day. Um, and I work for, you know, four or six hours on weekends as well, uh, on Saturdays and Sundays as well. You know, so my life, basically my entire life is dominated by Ubuntu. Um, and most of the local events tend to happen in the evenings or, or at weekends. And, you know, by the time it gets to an evening, I just want to close my laptop lid and I want to sit in front of the TV and have a beer and watch Barbecue Pit Masters. And it's, you know, I try to get out as much as I can to, to, to some of the local events. But, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's just sometimes you just need to unwind. Um, uh, I could probably do with doing better. Uh, but as Popey mentioned, you know, uh, lots of people in Canonical go to uh, go to local events and go to Linux user groups and whatever else. And I'm just one person. Um, you know, 
So um, that's basically the reason. That's basically the reason why. Uh, uh, frugal pie is that periodic table complete? I think so. <laughs> um, Pamibo, last year Marsha Elworth said that development will move more behind closed doors. Did he mean Ubuntu Phone OS uh, with that, or will we see some surprises on the future desktop releases? Uh, that's actually not what he said, and uh, this was this was something that was a little bit misreported. What he said was that you know there is some development that we do behind closed doors, and um, frankly, we've been doing that for a long time with Ubuntu. There's been some things in the canonical work on. And then we have what Mark often refers to as the big reveal. So we basically work on something, and then we and then we launch it, and we get some good press and interest and all the rest of it. Um, what Mark was talking about there is what we refer to as the Skunk Works program, and this is where we encourage um, you know we have the, some of these closed some of these private projects, but we want to include our community in them as best we can. So essentially, what we do is. Um, we, you know, we find people who are doing good work, and we've invited them to participate um, in these projects. So let me give you a few examples. Um, we've got a, I can't tell you what it is, because it's private. Uh, we've got a project that's going on that relates to the HUD, uh, a pretty cool project that we're hoping to land in 1310. Um, and we've had a member of the community who's been helping to do a lot of the development work there. Um, we've had some projects, some, some work that's been relating, that's related to the SDK um, around um, being able to deploy applications from your desktop to a phone via SSH, as well as some of the cross compilation work that's part of the SDK. So we've had you know community members who've been helping there as well. Um, we also have some projects such as the icon theme. You know we want to do a refresh of icons, um, and we're currently getting the icon design guidelines finalised, so we can then have people in the community come and join and, and contribute there. So those are the kinds of things. Um, those those are. Uh, those are the kind of things that we're talking about. Um, conscious user, are there plans to hire full-time people to accelerate documentation work? Some Ubuntu exclusive API docs are very, very lacking compared to, for example, GNOME docs. The use of the response is, this is volunteers welcome. Uh, we're actually talking about that. We had a sprint last week about improving the quality, quality of our API documentation. That is something that we're, we're planning on focusing on. We're just trying to figure out who's going to be the right person to do that internally. Professor Twitch, we heard about an icon refresh a while back, and now I've seen, uh, and have uh, now seen. I'm assuming. Oh, we've now seen the new icons for the scopes, the BFB, Ubuntu Software Center, etc. Given you have hired a designer, can we expect to see more new icons uh, in raring? Yes, you can. I mean, we should start seeing some more icons coming in raring. One of the challenges here is that before you can really do a refresh of icons, you really need some design guidelines for how those icons will look and feel and all the rest of it. The design team in Canonical was working on that. Um, the design team in Canonical was working on finalizing that uh, that work. Uh, it it got a bit delayed for a few reasons. First of all, they what they got you know they had to finish the phone design. Um, secondly, um, uh, secondly, there was some work going on with like a university, and that got delayed. And there was basically a few internal complexities around how these design guidelines were going to be finished before we could actually then give them to our designer to basically say, here you go, and also get the community involved as well. So the design guidelines are still in progress. Um, one of the things that I was discussing with Evo Weavers, who runs the design team, is about the idea of us maybe flying out a community designer to go and spend a couple of weeks in London, work with the design team, and kind of get that working. So hopefully we'll start seeing some. But yeah, there have been a bit more delay than we expected. Icons. Um, so icons, as in the. Username. So idling on a loco channel to support your local community is hard or makes your day longer. Icons, no offense, but I don't know what your problem is here. Um, let me put it this way. Um, you know, I love Ubuntu, and it's my day job, and I love everything about participating in Ubuntu, and I work way, way more than I should do on Ubuntu. You know, I'm, I'm technically supposed to work from 9 to 5, and uh, anyone who knows me who is logged into IRC will realize that I don't work from 9 to 5. I work a lot more than 9 to 5. I work every weekend on Saturdays and Sundays as well. Um, now, does that mean, you know, if, are you, if you're basically saying, um, is it really that hard to idle on a, on a, um, on a if, if you're basically saying, you know, 
I'm lacking in supporting my um, <laughs> Dr. Mo. If, if you're basically saying that I'm not supporting my loco team if I'm spending time with my pregnant wife and my new baby and I want to spend some time relaxing a little bit after working a 14-hour day, then yes, that's not me supporting my loco team. Um, one of the thing I can assure you is I'm not going to be guilted into going to my loco team. I absolutely 100% support the Californian loco team. They do wonderful work. Um, in fact, I was idling on the, on, the, on the Californian team channel, but I recently re uh, set up Raring, and I just haven't added it to the ISC channel, this, this auto, the one that I you know, automatically join. Um, but, you know, I don't know what to say to you. I mean, I do the best that I can with, with the Californian local team, but my days are packed with Ubuntu stuff. And if I spent, basically, if I went to every meeting and I went to every Linux user group and everything else, you know, I'm going to burn out and I'm going to go crazy and I'm going to do a bad job. And then I'm pretty sure that you'd be in the next Q&A meeting asking me why I'm doing a bad job. So, you know, I hate to say it, man, or woman, but... Just deal with it, you know? We're all people, and Ubuntu is a huge part of my life, but it's not every part of my life. Um, my, I love my wife, and I love my baby, and I'm going to spend time with them. And that means I'm going to spend time away from IRC or away from a, a meeting if I need to. So that's just the way it works. Um, dude says, uh, asks, uh, did you get to explore much of CES uh, earlier this month? Not really. <laughs> I, um, I managed to... Um, I managed to uh, see, I basically had two times when I managed to see a bit of CES. Was one was on walking to do an interview, and I managed to walk through one of the halls. And then on the Friday afternoon, as everything was calming down a little bit, uh, one of our engineers, Mike Frey, and I, we took 20 minutes to go off and just check out the Samsung booth, um, just to go, because it's huge. Uh, and other than that, I spent the entire time wedded to, my, uh, to the booth. Um, Cormac uh, says, any guitar playing today? Unfortunately not, because I have a sleeping baby in the next room, and playing death metal is going to wake him up, and that's not going to make anyone happy. Uh, but I promise you, next week there will be guitar playing, if you want it. If you don't want it, then that's fine as well. Um, uh, Professor Twitch, I often see hilarious stories from parent life. Any funny baby incidents this week? Uh, this week, not really. Um, one of the things that's funny about our baby, Jack, um, he's, he's a really good boy, and, you know, my wife and I are new to this. It's only two months old. But one of the things that, um, <laughs> one of the things that he does is he, we call it the zombie. So what happens is he basically doesn't go, shall we say, for a couple of days. Um, so he doesn't fill that diaper. Um... And then what he does is he, because he's a good boy, he likes to save it up for us. Uh, and he likes to save it up good. And then he'll sit there and he'll make this, like, walking dead kind of, like, kind of sound. And we call it the zombie, and we know it's coming. <laughs> and it's at that point you think, I hope I, you know, I hope I pulled out the little flap things on the side of the nappy or diaper, whatever you want to call it. And then just, boom, it's just, it's a whole world of pain right there in one place. <laughs> Boy, does he go. So, yeah, we love the zombie. Um, <laughs> Poppy says, I make the same zombie noise. Maybe. I do the same thing. I mean, we all do it, right? So we got uh, three minutes left. Uh, any other questions? Oh, Frugal Pie, will Ubuntu have any adverts in print, internet, or TV media? Uh, I think you'll probably see some. I mean, it's the problem with that kind of advertising, particularly TV, is it's insanely expensive, and it's just a better use of our resources to put that into engineering or other traditional marketing. But I think, you know, particularly, you know, I think when we get a handset deal or uh, with a carrier or a handset manufacturer around phone, there'll probably be some co-marketing and all that kind of stuff as well. Uh, okay. Any other... Any other questions? None of them. How does Canonical usually pick new employees? Well, like any company, you know, you, you um, apply and we just look how, how good you're going to be at your job, basically. Um, you know, it's like any company, like we just look for excellent staff. Um, 
Ayo hey, Wanderer, what's your favorite beer? My favorite beer is called Shock Top. I think it's a local brew around here. In fact, I Popey, I think Popey had some of it. I hung out with Popey like a week ago, and I think he had some of it. It's amazing. Uh, RZ, RZR, won't it be a good idea to set up a program for existing Migo Symbian QML developers? We have apps to port to Ubuntu. Actually, you know, we've been discussing that recently about making it easier for these other Q and QML communities to, um, you know, to participate. Um, and um, the Zoltan, who's who's running the SDK team, is very very keen to uh, is very very keen to kind of like work with some of these other communities. So we're actually discussing ways in which we can kind of collaborate on that. But we don't have anything firm or fixed right now. The Shack, until now, um, Windows 8 has had very few success, and we, uh, and we know more and more manufacturers choose Linux. Do you think this is time for Ubuntu to have more success on desktop? My inclination here is that the thing about a convergent strategy that we're working on is it's a lot of work up front to kind of get to, to be able to sh show this full story of the phone, the tablet, the, the desktop. But when one of these devices really hits, it's going to be good for all of them. And my inclination is you know, the desktop will be along for the ride. Um, um, I can hear the baby crying. Greg F. Martin, I think he's actually doing the zombie right now. <laughs> Greg F. Yeah, he is. Greg F. Martin, is there currently a way to test Ubuntu phone apps and existing hardware compatible with the Ubuntu phone mobile ROM image, for example, running them on Nexus 7? Sorry to set the conversation back into the technical track. Greg, do not, do not <laughs> apologize for moving it from baby poo back to, <laughs> to Ubuntu. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, one of the things that we want to we're going to be planning on shipping is some is some, some default images for uh, for the Galaxy Nexus, and then um, you'll be able to the SDK will be able to allow you know you'll have a phone plugged in, you'll be able to deploy the application to it. We just we're just actually working on that right now. Um, and Popey, yeah, shocked up was the cloudy beer. I think we're done. So I think we're we're all sorted. Uh, we've been through the questions. Thank you. Everybody for joining me as usual. I hope some of these questions, uh, some of these answers were useful. Sorry, a couple of the answers were a little bit long-winded, um, but you know, I know there's a lot of detail flowing around. But thank you, everybody, for participating. Thank you for all of the support that you all provide for Ubuntu. I think we we just uh, we're at, we've got 2013 off on, on a great foot, and there's just a tremendous amount of opportunity of bringing free software to so many people and so many devices. And the thing that gets me excited about Ubuntu is not just the fact that it's an open source system and a free software system, it's the fact that we have the ability to bring free software to people who traditionally Linux has been inaccessible because it's been too technical or too niche. And um, the only way we can do that is with you know, our community working together, with Canonical working well with the community. And I think we're, on the right, I think we're heading in the right direction. And obviously, everybody here is, uh, is contributing to that. So thank you. And I'll see you all next week for another Q&A. Remember to subscribe to youtube.com forward slash Ubuntu on Air for next Ubuntu on Air sessions and, se and check the calendar. We'll be having some Ubuntu developer, uh, developer Week sessions on Air. So make sure to stay tuned. And see you next week. Bye. <laughs>